let's do um, another CSTR example. Uh, we'll call this example four. And um, let's, we're going to do this because it's going to help show us um, how to use stoichiometric tables in the context of problem solving uh, for at least what one way to use it for, for a CSTR uh, reactor sizing. <clears throat> so we're going to have um, more species involved that'll help illustrate the value of a stoichiometric table. So let's say our reaction now is A goes to B uh, plus C plus 2D. All right. And um, let's say this is liquid phase. Uh, this is going to be at steady state. Uh, and we're given an interesting rate expression. It's going to be KCA in the numerator. Um, and it's going to be 1 plus, this is a different K, a capital K, but not an equilibrium constant, just another kind of rate constant here. Um, times CA. This is actually a, an expression form that we'll revisit later in the course. Um, you'll see where this can kind of come from, um, characteristic of surface catalyzed kinetics. Okay, well, uh, let's go ahead and give some parameters. Our little k is um, 8.6 inverse hours. Our big Ka is going to be 0 0.50 liters per mole of A. That's the units for that. Um, and I mean, if you're wondering about that, you'd see that where the justification for that is clear based on the form of the rate expression here. Um, if you want your rate to have the normal units that it would have for K times CA, then the denominator needs to be dimensionless. For that to be the case, this Ka needs um, to have uh, inverse molar units. Okay. Uh, more about our setup. So we're going to have a feed that's a mix. It's a mixture of A and an inert solvent I. I'll just write that out. Inert solvent I. Okay. Ca not is equal to 0 0.75 moles per liter. And again, I think some of these examples with numbers are useful um, just for thinking about units and, and actually pulling out your calculators and so forth. So that's why we're taking the time to write those out. Uh, we're gonna have no B, C, or D in the feed. Try not to be completely unreasonable with this problem. Uh, I'm going to switch the page now to um, allow for uh, continuing to, to write the prompt. Uh, okay, um, we're going to have a volumetric flow rate of the feed and that's going to be a thousand liters per hour. Uh, and what we want to know is what reactor volume, okay, now I'll just start to use some expressions, what reactor volume is required? Uh, and here's how we're going to pose the question. For the net production rate, net production rate of D to be at least 1200 moles per hour. So let's think about this prompt for just a moment. Um, you know, I just talked to you all about conversion and how maybe you're just trying to hit a percent target, um, which you might want to do for a variety of reasons. Let's now imagine a different scenario where you're a manufacturer and you've got a certain production target to meet. Maybe D is your desired product and you sell about 1200 um, moles, not, well, effectively you sell the equivalent maybe per year that translates into 1200 moles per hour. So maybe this is how you're deciding um, how you're going to size your reactor. So that's one reason why you might be given information in this format. 
So let's let's work then on the solution, which I'll show in blue. Let me pause for a moment just to ask you what our strategy might be here. Just think about the approach. Don't try necessarily to, to substitute numbers or, or um, you know, work out a lot of, of different expressions. Just tell me or think about what you're going to do. Okay. Hopefully you've had a second to sort of think about what you might do here. Um, in general, what we're gonna do is the following. We're gonna say that um, based on uh, this net production rate of D, we're gonna try to get a conversion. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna try to figure out the, the conversion. And that's probably a good first step given how we know that conversion can be useful. Now if you think about how we've been approaching problems before, we were we would use, we would try to get a rate expression and use a design equation. This prompt gave us a rate expression. So a uh, second step then is to then just use uh, the right design equation. Okay, so this is our conceptual strategy. Hopefully this makes sense. We're gonna go ahead and get started then. Um, so let's think about our stoichiometric table. Uh, for a CSTR, probably makes more sense to uh, track molar flow rates since everything is flowing in and out um, rather than moles. So now I'm going to just lay out and I'll switch to black here just so maybe in case the blue is bothering anyone. Go ahead and write a table where you have a few column species. We're going to call this molar feed rate and we'll call this molar effluent rate. Remember our molar effluent rates um, uh, are just the same. Uh, uh, effectively, they're the same concentration as, as what would be in the reactor. Um, but of course, uh, you have a, a flow rate out. Okay, so um, species A, B, we had C, D, and I. I'll draw a line across here. Okay, um, in our problem statement, we had two things in the feed. We had A and we had I. There was no B, C, or D. So we can go ahead and write F A naught, zero, 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 F the molar feed I flow rate of an inert uh, uh, molecule coming in. And because it's inert, um, while the fraction of the composition that it makes up uh, may well change as a function of the reaction, the molar flow rate um, coming out uh, has to be the same. Um, the, the, because I is not reacting, moles in must equal moles out. Um, okay, so now if I were to do this stoichiometric table with terms, uh, everything in terms of conversion of A, I can use the definition of conversion. And this might be one of the most common ways that you use conversion here um, in this form, uh, where this is just a rearrangement uh, that was equal to FA. And now you have to keep in mind what's really important is remembering the law of definite proportions and just some other basic information about stoichiometry from chapter one of the Roberts textbook. So if the stoichiometric coefficients are the same, you know that it's as simple as for species B, just saying that, well, it's a product. So my conversion of A um, is, is the amount, it, 
represents the amount of B formed. Uh, and, and so then I can just take, um, you know, the, the molar flow rate of A to begin with and multiply that by conversion. Uh, and that's the same for, for oop, that should say A, um, for species C. And then for D, because of the stoichiometry, it's um, two FA naught uh, times the conversion of A. Okay, so what we were trying to get at, it's really here. Um, we know that the, the net production rate of D um, can be related back to our conversion in this way. So let's go ahead and write that and I'll switch back to blue here. Um, so we know that two F a naught times conversion of A equals FD, which equals that 1200 moles per hour. And so if we do a little calculation here, uh, first to try to get um, our FA naught, which we need. So FA naught is the volumetric flow rate times the initial concentration of A. And so we know that we had a thousand liters per hour of uh, volumetric flow rate in, and that we started with a concentration of A of 0.75 moles of A per liter. And so that gives us an FA naught of 750 moles of A per hour. Okay, and so now we're ready to get conversion of A, uh, which I'll just do on the left here. Uh, so if you, well, if you solve for XA, uh, you get 0 0.80. Okay, um, so now I'm gonna move on to the next page. And so now we're gonna, we're just sort of doing the part two um, use of the de design equation. So uh, we have uh, this design equation, which we used before for CSTRs. And now we can substitute for RA, Well, we could always do that with what was given. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, it looks like I switched color by accident. Okay. Um, so we have conversion of A, which we've recently figured out is 0 0.8. And then we have what I'm writing now is uh, the rate expression. Um, but I've, I've uh, accounted for the fact that it's in the denominator. Uh, okay. So we're almost ready to solve this. Um, what we don't know is CA, but we do, because this goes back to conversion. And so rather than have to do the analytical substitution here to try to get everything in terms of, of, um, of conversion, we're dealing with CSTRs, it's algebraic, and it also we can just start to, to calculate things a little separately here. So to show you what I mean, um, you know, we know that the definition of conversion allows us to, to do this and just directly solve for CA. We were already given what CA naught was. So when we do that, um, we have 0.75 moles per liter. And then we have um, one minus 0 0.8. Uh, and so that gives us a CA of 0 0.15. Uh, moles per liter. Quick uh, sanity check. Our conversion is 80%. That means 80% of what we started with should be getting reacted away. That's four fifths. And if we're starting with 0.75 or just think of it as 75, um, it makes sense that we have just 15 left. Um, okay. So now we don't have to necessarily do all the plug and chug here. If we were to take this CA and all the other parameters that we were just supplied, um, we also know what FA naught is. We can go ahead 
and you know calculate v and you get v equals 500 liters and if you're curious and wanted to get some more practice with your calculator make sure you don't um, you know come exam time mess this up you can go ahead and, and try to plug in these numbers and convince yourself that it is in fact 500 liters